Now it's time to add a bunch of URLs into our comments themselves. Do note that the comments have been a lot more work than the posts, right? Because the comments are definitely more complicated than a post is, which is a little funny because the post is really where the value is in many cases. Some cases, the comments, like the back and forth is actually really good too. So it's really hard to say exactly where the value is. But we want to we want to put the URLs in here. And then eventually what we want to do is actually be able to see the user and some user data in here, which is something we just haven't really covered yet. But we definitely will come back to it once we finish the user side of things. Um, so what I want to do now is is add in a URL in here. We don't necessarily need that ID, but it will keep that ID because it is useful for the replies. So we'll leave that ID in there. And then also I want to, I, I no longer want to have content type and com, uh, object ID for the detail itself, right? And also even on the list, I don't necessarily need to see those things. I might want to see a link directly to it, but realistically all of that stuff's going to be in the detail itself. Um, so in the list API, we are going to get rid of uh, quite a few things here. We're gonna get rid of parent, object ID, content type, and then add a URL. So let's do that first. Um, and if we wanna check our view that actually handles the list, and that's the comment list API view. And we call it the comment serializer. I'm gonna change it to being called the comment list serializer. So it's a little bit more verbose, so we know what it is. And I'm gonna scroll back up and do the import of comment list serializer. And that also means, of course, inside of our serializers, we want to change that original comment serializer to comment list serializer. And now I'm going to go ahead and comment all of these out. No longer want those. The comment list is still very much the main list, right? It's still comment.objects.all. It's going from ones that are parent comments. This is not doing all of them as it stands right now. So that's really up to you on how you want to do this. But since we have this search functionality and all that, I'm actually gonna do filter. Um, and that's gonna be ID is greater than or equal to zero. So I'm actually gonna include all of the comments now in this comment list so we can see those. Refresh in here. Let's go ahead and make sure we save everything. Oh, I think we have a problem with the API, posts API serializer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this the original one and keep it in there, all of it, because we have something else that's relying on it. But for the comment list, this is the one we're gonna be using. So I refresh in there and now it's showing up. Okay, cool. So this should show all of ours. If we save the comment objects now, we save it and it should have all of the comments in here. And it looks like it does, right? So it will show reply count, reply count. Um, so with the way the comments are currently, you can actually have um, multiple parents, meaning uh, one parent has children and then another, and then the children have children and so on. So you can definitely do that sort of stacking. You, you see it a lot in like Reddit and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, so we now have these comments. So let's go ahead and create the URLs for them. And it's not a whole lot different than what we've seen before. So serializers, this hyperlinked identity field, doing the exact same thing inside of the comment. Let's make sure the hyperlinked identity field is imported and we and it is. So in the comment list, specifically the comment list, we are gonna go ahead and get it. And we'll just say detail URL or more specifically just URL, cause that's what it is. And then it's gonna be comments dash API detail. We don't need that lookup field because it would be off the ID so, or the primary key, which is the default stuff we've already talked about. I'm gonna add this URL in here. And this is now, should now give me, oh, it's not called detail, it is called thread. As we look in the URLs, thread. Um, so we go back in here and there we go. Now we can actually click on any individual comment. And if it is our comment, we can actually go ahead and update it. Uh, so the list view is going very, very small, right? So we actually have, that's because we're using the post page number pagination, which I'm now gonna change back from being two to being like 20, something more realistic. Refresh and now we can see all the different posts. Notice it's going off of the IDs and it is giving a reply count. So everything can be a parent. Children can have children can also be a parent and all that. Um, so that is something to think about when it is designing this stuff. But anyways, now we can go on any detail view and do the stuff that we need to do for it. 
Um, the next thing I want to do is in the detail view is I want to change the content type and object ID to getting the API URL for the content object. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is going to be just in the comment detail serializer. And we're going to call this the object. We're going to just call it object content object URL. And it's going to be a serializer method field. And we're gonna put this into our fields here. I'm gonna get rid of content object ID as well as content type. Again, in the detail, we don't necessarily need those things. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of them because updating, when we update it, we're not gonna need it. Uh, we're just updating content. When we delete it, we don't need it. We're just, we're just deleting it. Um, we, all we need is the primary key for the comment for those two things. But when we actually use that stuff, we actually have it in the post itself. So we don't have to worry about it uh, at this point. Okay, so now we've got this serializer method field. Let's go ahead and create it and we'll define get object content object URL self object. And we wanna return something like object dot get absolute URL. So we're gonna have to create its own method. So if we refresh in here, we got the content absolute URL. Um, this is going to the wrong one actually. So it's object.content object. So this is the page that it'd be on. So I refresh in here and now it's showing the slug for that page. That's great, but that's not what we want. Instead, what we want is the API URL. So we're gonna call this get API URL and we're gonna save it, refresh. The post object has no attribute get API URL. Well, duh. So instead we'll say try, return that, and then accept, return none. Um, so there's a reason for this. It's, it has to do with the fact that we didn't actually implement this method on the instance that we're working with. So this right here is gonna fail unless we do the none part. So it's either gonna try or not get it. All right, so let's go ahead and create that by jumping into the post model. And we're gonna go down into the instance method from get absolute URL, literally just copy it, paste it underneath it, uh, change the indentation a little bit and just change it to get API URL and we'll do reverse post dash API detail, all the other stuff's the same. We save that, refresh in our comment and now we have a path directly to the post detail or the object that it's on uh, the, the list there. Um, so the actual place that it'd be. Again, if we're using different models, we can have comments on there, uh, which is something that makes this comment API just that much more flexible for us. It's the reason why we use generic foreign keys. Of course, it would be easier if we didn't use generic foreign keys, but in this case, it wasn't about what was easier, it was about what was necessary to do. And in this case, using generic foreign keys was definitely necessary to do for the comments also for just long-term viability. Because if you have a blog, it doesn't mean that you're always gonna use just posts. You might have another page, or you might just have several pages that you wanna have comments on, and this is a way to do that. Cool, guys, so that's pretty much it for the comments themselves, the API. Um, if there's anything else we need to add to it, we definitely will come back. But now it's time to actually move into the user stuff. Um, I'm really excited about that because that is really where we do authentication, creating users and doing all that inside of the Django REST framework. So then our apps can actually build off of using these users. We've done so many things that will rely on using users, but we just haven't actually implemented the users yet. So if you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.